Oh, there we go. What's up guys, Cameron here. Thank you for tuning in to a new video. Uh, it's been a little bit since I've uh, last uploaded. It's been a lot of it, actually. Uh, it's been a while, so I just wanted to make a new video and just kind of touch base and update on what's been going on in my life and, and why I haven't been uploading and what my plans are for the future and, and all that stuff. Really, this is my way of getting myself back in the habit of uploading again. Getting back into the swing of things, uh, but some big things have happened since I've last uploaded. The first one, you can probably tell already, the scenery is a little different. Uh, I'm no longer in my Mustang. I traded in the Mustang and got a truck. So we'll, uh, when I get home, we'll look at it and, and kind of talk about what I got and all that stuff. But this opens the door for me to get a camper, get a boat, you know, or, or a kayak, and uh, go make memories with my family and, and really start uh, maybe even tournament fishing. So I think, you know, this was a smart decision, got a good deal on it, and we'll take a look at it when we get back home. I also revamped my whole rod and reel arsenal for this season. So I bought four or five new rods and kind of swapped my reels around and got everything dialed in, I think just the way I like it. So we'll go over that too. And then maybe later today I'll get out and, and do some fishing and filming as well. So stay tuned guys. All right guys, so just really quick, here is the new truck. This is a 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 Elevation and this one has the Duramax in it. So it's got the LZO engine in, in it and not the, uh, I think the 5.3 and the 6.2 are the V8 options for it. But I got the diesel, first diesel I've ever owned. Truck came with black badges. I plan on removing the elevation badges off the door. Plan on removing this X31 decal on the bedside. And then removing all the emblems back here besides the black GMC badge. Those are the only badges I want on the truck, but you can see here, dynamic blue, a beautiful color. Obviously rocking the Dobbins and the, I don't know if you can really see it, but I got the Sixth Sense logo right there. It's got the uh, upgraded AT4 running boards on it. So they're like this textured bed liner material, not plastic. I've already got the spray and liner put in. Which is really nice. This truck does not have the multi-pro gate, which is good. If you don't know, the multi-pro gate is like a second upper gate that goes right here and you can just open that or the full assembly. But if you have a trailer hitch, a lot of the times that opens up and you'll see these trucks with damage right here. And that's just from hitting the trailer hitch. So I don't really need it. So I, I got one without it. But if we open the bed up, you can see soft closing or soft opening tailgate. It's got LED lights in the bed here, 12 volt power outlet, multiple tie downs around. So this is not a fully loaded truck by any means, but it does have everything that I need. Take a look inside here. The truck is dirty. Uh, I did not clean it before showing it. So you can see my dog's nose prints all over the windows. This is where she rides, but plenty of leg room back here. Got another couple outlets right there with air vents. You can fold these seats up and keep stuff underneath the seats and have plenty of storage room back here if you have something else you want to put in here. Cool wood trim around all the doors. It's got soft touch leather on all the armrests. And let's take a look. Actually, let's go to the driver's side. So again, it's dirty, it's a truck, it's not a show car, so I'm not trying to keep it pristine all the time. But this is GMC's upgraded or newly refreshed infotainment system. So if we close the door here. Get a really cool animation and starting it up. I did get the foldable center console. So this folds up and has another seat right here. So you don't have the actual gear selector and everything in the middle. Cloth seats, I carry my dog everywhere with me so I don't want her scratching leather. Let's see, massive infotainment screen with Apple CarPlay, Google Assistant, everything you need. It's got heated seats, obviously dual climate control 
and more USB plugs right there. It's got a cool upper storage glove box and a lower one. Obviously you get quite a bit of storage in there. And then the uh, dash is all digital too, so you can control and go through here and really, you know, if you want it to look like an old school style dash, crazy that we call these old school now, where you have the full tachometer and speedometer, you could do that. Or you can go all the way as simple as just having the digital speed on there. So I like this one, kind of the best of both worlds. So that's what I usually run. It's got great gas mileage. I'm averaging about 25 miles to the gallon right now, which is insane. And you can see it's got the piano black trim kind of all around the infotainment. I really like the design of these right here. This like cutout on the dash looks really cool. There's a look from the driver's seat. Obviously you have your mode controls drive mode, four wheel drive, all that good stuff, and then your electronic parking brake. Another cool little detail is anytime you switch, that's for the lights, anytime you switch drive mode, it kind of changes the little animation by the truck. Just something kind of small that people might not even notice, but I definitely notice it and I like it. So very happy with the truck so far. I've only put, it's got 6,000 miles on it. I've only put about 1,500 on it. It was a loaner. So I got it with 4,500. You can see the LED lights there. Just overall, beautiful, beautiful truck. And I'm very proud to have worked and bought this all on my own. All right guys, so here is my tackle arsenal. So this is an old TV stand that we no longer use that I just kind of converted. So I got all of my tackle trays up here. Got some extra soft plastics in these boxes. And then those are all soft plastic boxes down there. And then here is the rods and reels. Got most of my spinning rods over here and then bait casting over here. So real quickly, we're gonna run through them and tell you what I use. All right, so I got three rods and reels that I wanna show off to you guys today. Uh, these are my spinning setups, going from least expensive to most expensive. Starting off, we have the Dobbins Fury 702. This is my Ned Rig setup. It is a Johnny Morris Platinum Series reel, uh, 2,500 size, 15 pound braid to six pound fluoro. Um, even though this is their entry level rod from Dobbins, it is extremely sensitive, extremely, light and a uh, very good rod for the price this this rod got me hooked on the brand and made me want to uh, see what their higher end models had what they were all about and how much better they were or what the difference was really between the the different models so um, if you're just looking to get into the dobbins line and, and kind of want to see what's up with them furies are a great place to start so next we have the champion xp here this is a 732 SF. This is my wacky rig and shaky head setup. So it's a little bit longer, has a little bit more backbone, even though it is still a two power, just like this one. Just the extra length helps you uh, helps you hook up a little bit better. So um, when you start getting into the Champion XPs, you're getting into, I would say probably getting into the higher end of the, uh, there's only two models above this one and even the pros say this is probably the best bang for your buck that you can get. So I really, really like this setup. This is a Daiwa Procyon MQLT on here, 2,500 size as well, with 20 pound braid to 10 pound fluoro. And like I said, I use this for wacky rigs and shaky heads. Now, finally, we have my favorite spinning setup I've ever used. This is a Dobbins Champion Extreme HP 702 with a Shimano Vanford 2500. And that is 15 pound braid to eight pound fluoro. You can see my drop shot up to my uh, six cents uh, glitch minnow right there. So just take a look, take a look at this. That is a work of art and it fishes as good if not better than it looks it feels like 
you know, the Rolls Royce of fishing setups. So definitely if you have the means, get you a Champion Extreme HP. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, bait casters. Going from least expensive to most expensive again. We've got my Fury 795 swim bait rod. This is the only swim bait rod I own. It was kind of my introduction to swim bait fishing and it is awesome. I've got a 13 fishing concept A2 on there. That's the five speed reel. So you can really slow roll those swim baits and it is a great setup if you're wanting to get into swim bait fishing. Next is my Whopper Popper and Popper setup. Small top waters, things like that. This is a Fury 703 with a Daiwa CR80 on there with some monofilament line, and that's the Berkeley Chapo Whopper Plopper. And that's a great setup. Even though it is very budget friendly, you uh, can still catch plenty of fish and, and have a great setup that'll last you a very long time. So next is the only Sierra series rod I own. This is my Fluke setup. This is a 733 Sierra. You can see my flat side or my flat shank hook on there with the screw lock my flukes. The reel is a Daiwa Tatula SV TWS. That's the six speed reel. And I believe 14 pound floral on there. It's a little bit long for a fluke rod, but it can also be, you know, double as a rattle trap rod or something like that. As you can see, it's actually rated for Sankos, flukes, spooks, spinnerbaits, and toads. So kind of another do it all rod, but right now I've been using it for jerk baits and flukes and I've been liking it a lot. So next is the only Caden series rod that I own. This is my Texas rig rod. Right now I've got a big worm on there. This is the 745 Caden. You can see, let me turn it around a little bit. You can see there. Paired with the uh, same reel as the last one, SVTWS, but this is the seven speed. I really like how the red of the reel matches the red of the Caden theme. It makes my OCD uh, very happy. So next up, we've got the Champion XPs. I got three of them. The first one is my frog setup. So this is the, I believe, 745, no, 736. I apologize. 736 Champion XP with a uh, eight speed Corrado DC on there and 50 pound braid. So I've been using this a lot this time of year when it's really hot. You find a pond or an area of the lake with a lot of vegetation on top of the water. This thing is just a dream. It walks frogs very well. I yeah, trimmed the skirt down on that frog a lot. It helps it walk a little bit better, I found. But very, very good setup. Next is the only glass rod I own. This is my 735 CB glass with a uh, Shimano Corrado K on there and just a divine six inch divine spinnerbait. Uh, this is my jackhammer spinnerbait and crankbait rod. So I've been using it for uh, deep diving crankbaits this time of year, and it is a lot of fun. And then just anytime you want to throw a jackhammer, this is the way to go for sure. The glass rods make a huge difference, and uh, you can definitely tell after you hook your first fish on there the, the benefits of having something like that. Next, the last Champion XP here. This is what I believe Gary Dobbins said was the do-it-all rod can kind of do whatever you want. This is the 734. And right now I've got a swim jig on it with a uh, SLX DC. But if you take a look back here, it says it's rated for buzz baits, spinner baits, Sankos, toads, jigs, and small swim baits. So if you've only got room for one rod, this would be the one to take. It can cover basically everything and do it very well. So highly recommend the 734 if you're wanting to uh, check out the Champion XPs. And then finally, my Champion HP. This is my 744 Champion HP with a Daiwa Tatula Elite uh, eight speed flip and pitch. So it's got the, the bigger like power grip handles on there and it's, it's a very, very quick reel so you can catch up if a fish runs off and I use this for jigs and more recently these sleeper craws. So you guys have seen me use use these a lot, but this is my one of the newer rods that I have, so I haven't had a chance to film anything with this. But it is super light, super sensitive, and a ton of fun to use. So I'm very excited to get some videos in with these. So if you have questions about any of these setups or why I chose the model that I did or anything like that, please 
you know, leave a comment or send me a message and let me know. I'd be glad to, you know, talk fishing, talk Dobbins, talk rod and reels, whatever it is. So hope you uh, guys enjoy the video and stay tuned for more. Thanks so much.